Ever since the introduction of abilities in Generation 3, Wither has been a fundamental part of a large amount of metagames throughout the years. Most notably, ADV OU, Tyranitar, which sets Sand, which does 6% chip damage to anything that is not a rock, steel, or ground type, is the TR King. And then we also have Ubers, which has Kyogre and Groudon, which auto-set Rain and Sun, respectively. And then we even have the weather generation of Generation 5, where we have the introduction of Pokemon such as Politoed, which has access to Drizzle, which auto-sets Rain. It's even prevalent still up in Ubers, because Kyogre and Groudon are still there. But this also begs the question of, well, if you don't have the auto setter, are these teams even good? And the answer that Little Cup has is somehow yes. In Scarlet Violet Little Cup viability rankings, we have Buizel and Psyduck, two Swift Swimmers, in B plus tier, despite the fact that we don't have an auto setter such as Drizzle Pelipper, Drizzle Politoed, Kyogre, nothing like that. And the funny thing is, this has not been a thing. Since Generation 4, where in A- minus tier you have stuff like Mantike and Kabuto, which are Swift Swimmers, and it's pretty incredible how somehow, in the one generation where it's viable because there isn't Eviolite, we once again have a resurrection of Rain. So how exactly did this come to be? So, we have quite a few Rain Sweepers that we can use. First and foremost, we have Buizel. Its reintroduction in this generation is always really nice, especially with the addition of Wave Crash, the 120 water base power move, which has 33% recoil, so it's functionally water type Flare Blitz, but it's a really strong stab option to use when in rain, you have a boost to your water type moves, you have stab on it to your water typing, and then you can even terastalize water to even make it more powerful and break exceedingly easily. It's pretty crazy. You also have Bulk Up as a pretty nice option because you're so fast because of Swift Swim, which means that in rain, your speed is doubled. So you can always go first, you Bulk Up so that way you can be able to take a hit really well, take the hit, and then also in order to offset Wave Crash Recoil, you have Orin Berry. You would run Berry Juice otherwise, but Berry Juice is not legal. But then you also have some good coverage moves in Ice Spinner and Brick Break, so that way you can hit things that would otherwise resist your water moves. You want to be super effective against them, such as Pawniard, which it, it, it can be a bit annoying with. But most of the time, you're going to be clicking your water type move anyway. We also have Psyduck, and Psyduck is a bit of a sleeper hit, due to the fact that it finally got Nasty Plot this generation, meaning that its special attack gets raised by two stages whenever you use Nasty Plot. In addition, it can run Eviolite instead, because none of the moves that it runs, such as Surf, Ice Beam, Terra Blast, Electric, you can also run Psychic if you want. And Psychics like for hitting Marion A. But Terra Blast Electric is also good. But you don't have to run an Orin Berry. You can run Eviolite to still be really bulky, meaning that's hard to deny your setup. And you're still relatively fast because you get up to 30 speed under Swift Swim. And you have some really good coverage, so it's a really good sweeper as a result. Worth noting is that Watril always exists. Watril was added this generation. And it's got Volts Absorb to be an electric community, which would otherwise bother Buizel and Psyduck. But you have Weather Ball, so that way you can even have Water-type Stab, despite the fact that you don't get it naturally. You have Hurricane and Thunder, which are 110. Hurricane is Flying-type, Thunder is Electric-type. And their ability is that they can't miss in rain, which makes it really potent because you're throwing off these really powerful base power moves, which are really hard to resist because you have Water Coverage, Flying Coverage, and Electric Coverage. So how are you going to deal with that? And they can't miss. So that's all really nice. And then if you need to, you have Volt Switch for pretty nice coverage. And you're not too slow either. you got a good defensive typing, which is the same as Zapdos, which has been known to be really good for many a generation. But you have a little mini one. And then finally, we have Aracuda. It's a Swift Swimmer, and its niche is that it can use Life Orb. So if we go to Buizel and Psyduck, Buizel has 55 HP, Psyduck has 50 HP, and what sets Aracuda apart is that if you have 49 HP or less in Little Cup, you can get down to 19 HP. The reason why that's important is that Life Orb, its holders attacks do 1.3 times damage, and you lose 1 tenth of your max HP after each attack. Because of how Pokemon works, it rounds down a lot, so this 1 tenth, when it's applied to a 19, it turns into 1, so that means that you have 19 charges as opposed to 10, which is always really valuable. Plus, you have Stab Aqua Jet, which is nice for being a bit cheeky. If your opponent tries to revenge kill you with Sucker Punch from Pawnee or something like that, 
you can just use Aqua Jet. You're faster, and you're still going to do a lot of damage due to the Life Orb, your Stab, Water Type Boost, as well as Rain Dance. You have Liquidation as good stab. You have Psychic Things for things such as Marionee. And then you can run whatever you want in your final slot. You can run Close Combat. You can run Crunch. You can run Drill Run. You have a lot of options. You can also run Ice Fang if you're worried about Grass types getting in your way. But there's all that. So what exactly do you use to set rain if you don't have an auto setter, which is really odd? Well, you actually have quite a few. You've got three options, and they're all pretty nice. Shrewdle is a new Pokemon introduced to this generation, and it's useful for two main reasons, although there's a third one that's kind of there too. But the main things are you have Prankster, which means that your status moves have priority raised by one, which means that Rain Dance is now a priority move, which has the same priority as stuff like Aqua Jet, stuff like Sucker Punch, which is really good because then it's not dependent upon your opponent's speed on whether you can set up or not. But then you also have good utility moves in Knock Off, U-Turn, and Parting Shot. And this is a really good move pool to have. Knock Off removes uh, Eviolite as an item. And if we go to this limit here, you the Eviolite, it boosts defense, and special defense by 1.5 times. So if there's something really annoying that you just need to get knocked off, such as one of the rain checks that I'll go over later, then you can do that. It's additional utility. Then you have both U-Turn and Parting Shot. Now, both of these are switch out moves, but they have different purposes. Parting Shot, it weakens your opponent's attack and special attack by one, which is exceedingly valuable because both Buizel and Psyduck are setup sweepers. Buizel with Bullock Up and then Psyduck with Nasty Plot. But the reason why you run both Parting Shot and U Turn is that because of Prankster's downside, status moves such as Parting Shot are immune. These moves do not work on dark type Pokemon such as Pontiard such as Zorua, and then also you can tear a dark in order to be annoying as well. But the important part is, you have both U-Turn and Parting Shot, so that way you have your safe pivot move in U-Turn, so that way it's always guaranteed, or you have the, the more offensively based one that you, you think your opponent's not going to go to your dark type, so you use Parting Shot, and then you have a much easier setup with either of your mons in the back. Pretty nice. The little niche interaction that I was mentioning before is that you're a poison type, and the reason why that's important is that Glimmit is around, and a lot of people like running Toxic Spikes. What Glimmit does is that if it's hit by a physical attack, Toxic Spikes are set on the opposing side. There are also some other mons that like setting Toxic Spikes, and those are stuff like, you have Stunky, you also have stuff like Marion E. I'll go into more depth on Marion E later. But these also like setting up Toxic Spikes, and it can be really annoying for rain teams to deal with, because typically you don't run a Rapid Spinner. So, in order to combat this, Shrewdle can just absorb the Toxic Spikes because it's a Poison type, meaning it's a really good utility mod to use on Rain. Next up we have Voltorb, and Voltorb was one of the best users of Rain Dance in Generation 4, and has come back to reprise this role, because it's got a speed stat of 20 at level 5, which is faster than every single mon naturally. If they're running a Choice Scarf or they have a speed boost, then they're faster. But Voltorb doesn't need the boost that Prankster would give it because it's already so fast on baseline. So as a result, you can run stuff like Aftermath, you can run Static, you can run that kind of stuff in order to punish your opponent trying to break your Voltorb, which can be really nice. But you have Rain Dance, you have Volt Switch, which means that you still have the momentum that Shrewdle has. But you have stuff like Thunder, you can also run Terror Blast Ice, so that way you can be threatening to things like Toad School or Ground Types that would otherwise annoy you. And then the important thing that it has is Taunt, which is not blocked by Dark Types. Meaning that stuff like as Glimmit, that wants to set up Stealth Rock and Spikes, it can't now because it's Taunted. And that can be really useful for a lot of the game. Not having to deal with Hazards when switching around, especially not Toxic Spikes. Pretty valuable as a result. Uh, we have Ryolu next, and its niche is that it's still a Prankster Pokemon, but it's got Rain Dance. It's also got Copycat. And Copycat's a pretty important interaction, and I'll show it in a game in general. Round 5 of Scarlet Violet Little Cup kickoff tour. And I'll show why this is important, but it can be really useful for revenge killing, as well as just copying some very dangerous moves that your opponents are flying off, such as Hazards from Glimmit. So if, for example, Marion E, if it wants to use Toxic Spikes, what you can do is that you can have Ryulu come in on the Toxic Spikes coming out, then you can use Copycat, copy the Toxic Spikes, and then get set on your opponent's field. So it's just a really good utility move that you can use. You also have some other stuff, like you want to use Final Gambit, so that way you have good momentum, as well as some pretty alright damage, because you have 21 HP. You can do that. You also have High Jump Kick as good stab, which you can copy with Copycat to make priority, which is pretty fun. 
But I would consider this the worst of the Brain Setters because Trudel absorbs Toxic Spikes and Hultorb is so naturally fast. Next up we have, well, what's actually going to be our check terrain? And the, what makes it okay and only B plus rank? Well, first and foremost, as I mentioned, Marion E. It sets Toxic Spikes, so if your Trudel's gone, it's going to be really hard to deal with those. It has a water typing, it's got really good defensive profile, 62 defense, 52 special defense, plus regenerator, so it can switch out after it's taken a lot of hits and then come back in and still be relatively healthy. You have terra type water on this, so even if you have psychic coverage from Aracuda in Psychic Fangs and then Psychic from Psyduck, it can be really hard to hit sometimes, so there's that. It also has recover, so if you're not dealing enough damage to break over it, that can be really annoying. And then sometimes it doesn't even run Toxic Spikes, what it'll run instead is Haze. So if you're a, if you're trying to set up your Buizel with Bulk Up, then you can just lose all your progress just like that. The next thing we have to mention is Shellos. It has its niche as a Brain Heart Counter, because it has Storm Drain, meaning that water moves do no damage, and you get a special attack raise after using it. You also have Recover to keep yourself healthy, Stealth Rock for good utility, and then you also have Clear Smog. And Clear Smog resets all the target stat changes to zero. So stuff like Weasel and Psyduck can't set up on Shellos, which is really annoying. The issue with Shellos is that... The good news for Rain is that it's very hard to fit Shellos on teams because it's specifically for Rain and nothing else, and that could be really irritating. Because, like, well, why would I want to run a Shellos when I can run a Marion E, which is a Toxic Spikes Absorber, can also set Toxic Spikes itself, has Regenerator, so that way it's, it's exceedingly valuable even outside of the Rain matchup, and it has some it has sl Stab Sludge Bomb, which can poison the opponent. It's got a lot of really good traits, so it's very hard to justify using Shellos, despite the fact it's a hard counter to Rain. Next up, we have Quaxley. It's not too reliable as a Rain check, because it's not invincible, it doesn't have really good abilities like Regenerator and Storm Drain defensively. However, it's used on a lot of teams due to the fact it has Rapid Spin plus Moxie. Rapid Spin removes hazards as well as gives you a speed boost. And Moxie, whenever you KO another Pokemon, you get an attack raise. So the the important thing that Quaxley does is that, it, it, although it's a defensive Pokemon, it can still be a very powerful sweeper. And as a result, you have to be really careful because people are like running a defensive Pokemon that has a lot of offensive pressure. You also have Roost to keep yourself healthy and then Brave Bird as some pretty nice coverage for stuff. So it can be really hard to justify, like, well, it's really easy to justify Quaxley on teams. So you're going to see it a lot if we go to the viability rankings. Quaxley's A, we have Mariani in B+, and then we have Shellos in B tier. This is a quick bit of context. So like your main checks to it. Quaxley is kind of fragile because it's not Regenerator or Storm Drain. So it's just something to keep in mind, but it's probably the easiest of the three so far to get over. Next up we have Snover, and for context, Snover is B- tier. Down here. And it's important because it sets up a different weather, which means that you don't have Swiss Swim anymore, which can be really annoying to deal with. It also has a rework. In previous generations, it would set up Hail. Now it sets up Snow, and Snow gives you a 50% defense increase for all Ice types, meaning that with the Snover with maximum defense gets up to 33, which is the same as an Onyx with an Eviolite, meaning that it's a pretty reliable check to Buizel inside and outside of Rain. Pretty nice. Excuse me. You have Blizzard as good stab, you have Giga Drain to keep yourself healthy, which is really annoying when you have to... Like, this is one of the things that you really want to break on Rain. And it really likes using Giga Drain into your team, so how do you deny that? You have Blizzard as good stab against other matchups, and then you have Stab Ice Shard, which is just good priority moves for dealing with non-rain matchups. And you also have Protect, and the reason why you want that is the next member on our list, which is the Goat Nimble, the 210 BST King. It's got First Impression, which is plus two priority, which goes before stuff like Ice Shard and Aqua Jet, which can be really annoying for rain teams to deal with because Swift Swim boosts your defense. I mean, not, I'm sorry, not your defense, your speed, which means that you don't take hits. So having something that can hit really hard that isn't bothered by speed is really inconveniencing for rain because that means that you waste rain turns having to switch around the first impression as well as taking a lot of damage in return. It's got U-turn as well, so if you're trying to switch around it, then it can just gain momentum that way. And even after it's used up the first impression, it's still got Sucker Punch as good priority. It can be really hard for Rain to deal with, and it's super popular right now, because if we go to the viability rankings, 
Nimble is B+, it's right here. And one of the biggest reasons for that is that Giraffe Ready the Tier King is S rank. So people really like running Nimble. Next up, special mention to Wooper and Paldean Wooper, just because they're water absorb Pokemon. You can also set up Stealth Rock and Recover. You're likely not going to see Wooper and Paldean Wooper all that much because their base set total is the same as Nimble. It's 210, but it's really hard to justify in defensive Pokemon. Wooper is just gets a special mention because it's a rocker that deals with Toad School really well through the fact that it has Avalanche. And Avalanche quadruply effective against Toad School and kills it really easily when Toad School wants to come in and use a Grass Move versus Wooper. So there's that. And obviously this is all theory things. Like, well, you know, this could just be like in theory that rain's good, but we don't ever actually see it happen. Especially in Little Cup. I mean, you don't even have an auto setter. What's going on here? This can be really dumb. Well, we have a game here. CM Doge versus Nachikaru. This is Starlight Fight Little Cup kickoff tournament round five. And I'll just let this play. I'll go on fast. But Voltorb can, can taunt, prevent hazards from going up. And then you can set up rain on the next turn. Then I can just die, which is fine. And you go tank a tank again, and then you have Aracuda, which is really powerful, especially with the life orb boost. Then Thunder Wave, then gets paralyzed, but then it can liquidation again. And even when Ghastly tries to revenge kill on the next turn, you can just Aqua Jet and deal damage. And then the Nisha Rayolu comes in, you can just use Copycat. And then because of that, you copy Ghastly's Thunderbolt. Ghastly has very little bulk and can't take very many hits at 20%, so it dies. And then no matter what Jakiri goes into, you can always set up Rain Dance and it's all a-okay. But then next turn, you can go to Watt Rope really comfortably because Toad School has a hard time beating into it. But then you also have Stab Hurricane and Stab Thunder. Hurricane comes out here, and then you also have Weather Ball, so that we even resist to that, get hit really hard. And then Giraffery comes in, but then you can still hit it really hard with a Thunder, which can be hard to deal with. Just keeps on Calm Minding here. Thunder again. Then it starts sleeping as a rest, and then you go to Ryolu. Then you just set up Rain again. Giraffe Calm Minds. Then you lose your Ryolu next turn, but that's fine, because then you can really easily go into Weasel, which has Stab, Powerful, Rain cra Wave Crash, which does around 70% to Giraffe Rig. But then Giraffe Rig's weak enough that you can just finish it off with Psyduck and it's all a-okay. And then Psyduck wins the rest of the game. So as you can see here, even top players in like the upper echelons of Kickoff Tour still can use Rain pretty effectively. Because it's a bit of a matchup fish, but it's still pretty reliable, surprisingly. And that's the current state of Rain in Generation 9 Little Cup. It's pretty crazy how it can even exist. Like This is a throwback to Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. When you could use Voltorb, you could use a whole bunch of other stuff in order to set up rain. And look at it now! It's pretty crazy. Thank you all very much for watching. I really appreciate any and all viewership that I get. If you could like, share, and subscribe, I'd very much appreciate that too. Thank you all for watching, and have a good day!